My name is Megan James, and I just want to say thank you so much for tuning in and welcome to The Megan James Show. So the purpose of our show is to provide personal development, ideas, advice, and tips, as well as business help and advice to entrepreneurs. We are so passionate about helping our local businesses. So most of our interviews are actually with local successful business owners. And when I say local, they're local to the Kernersville Triad, North Carolina area. So... We want to boost the local economy as well as provide real, actionable advice for you guys, our listeners, the future and current business owners listening to the show. So without further ado, here's our show. Hey everybody, what's up? You're live here with the Megan James Show, and I want to bring a new topic and a new mindset to you today, something we haven't really gone over, but something I've been researching lately, and I think it might help some of you business owners, entrepreneurs, just a topic of interest. So I've been studying project management. Now, most of you know, I did not go to business school. I am not certified PMI because I don't have three years certifiable project management experience. But what I do have is a portfolio of CRM management, archaeological excavation management, um, painting like jobs with my dad, managing those sites, uh, estimating, doing everything a project manager actually does just without the title. Um, Even now, my current role where I work, a lot of what I do is project management. So I kind of want to talk to you today about when we jump into businesses, especially as entrepreneurs, we're really emotionally led a lot of the time, which can be great, but it can also be our downfall because we're so emotionally led and excited about this new business venture that we don't always plan. Um, And something I think could really, really help us entrepreneurs and business owners is more planning. And you don't have to go all out and get out your Excel spreadsheets, but it doesn't hurt to come up with things like a project charter and and I'll go over this in a minute but there are some concrete documents that are required to start a project and by definition a project is a temporary endeavor undertaken to create a unique product or service or a result so it's got a definitive beginning and end and an example of this might be Say you're replacing all of your computers at your current job. If you do them one at a time over a period of time, that's not really a project. But if you do them in one big overhaul, that's a project. Because you have to plan, you have to implement certain actions, you have to abide by policies, you have to consult with other groups, you have to get a project management group, you have to get people who can run the IT side of it, people who can purchase Um, the orders, get them distributed. And you have to really, really, you know, work with other people to form a team to get the project done. Uh, But more importantly, when you start the project, you have to speak with your stakeholders, right? You have to determine who your stakeholders are. And when I was reading project management, I was thinking of stakeholders. And I'm like, well, that sounds like investors. And, you know, and what I do day to day, I don't really have like investors. I don't. And then, and then I started defining stakeholders, really looking into the definition. And it's basically anybody that has a stake in whatever's coming to play. So maybe you're coming out with new software that could help a group of engineers. Okay. Well, this new software is going to be your project, implementing this new software. These engineers that you're promoting it to are your stakeholders. They're going to be using it every single day. So you want their feedback. You want to bring them to your side, convince them that they need this. And so when you start looking at stakeholders, I mean, it can be investors. It should be the people like if you've got some monetary sponsors, they need to be in there. And it will include a wide range of people. But it's the people who are vested in that product who actually have um, something to gain from it, you know. Uh, you want to keep those people happy, keep them on your side. And I was looking at this in, in different terms. So a lot of people do project management and construction. Um, they'll do it on you know job sites, things like that. But when you start flipping it around and using it in a variety of 
context, like business, okay? It makes more sense for me to sit down and say, okay, I'm going to launch this business. And then I just go out and the first thing I do is buy business cards. And then the next thing I do is tell a bunch of friends, hey, I'm starting this business. And it's going to be getting rocks from our driveway and painting them and selling them to people on Etsy. Okay, so I haven't researched the market on Etsy. I haven't researched the 30 to 60 day sale sale rates. I haven't um, seen if there's even a market out there for that, if there's people looking for that. I haven't looked at the cost of getting additional rocks. I haven't looked at the cost of the paint, the cost of the shipping, how much the weight would be. I haven't looked at any of those things. I've just decided, hey, this is a great idea. This is something I'm interested in, and I'm going to go ahead and do it. And that's the passion you need for business is to go out there and just do the damn thing. You don't want to waste too much time planning, but there should be a significant amount of planning. I wanted to kind of talk to you today about if I had done things differently, I would have approached a lot of my businesses with more of a plan. And one of the MLMs I got into, they kept talking about, oh, this is our business plan. This is our business plan. And they would take you to this meeting in a hotel and you had to go every certain day of the week to see the same quote unquote plan being shown. But it was not a business plan. They were standing there showing pictures of their family and talking about how this is uh, an opportunity that made them a ton of money and blah, 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 blah. But they didn't talk about the other ways they've made money and how they got here with a combination of everything. And it was just very um, uh, emotionally led. They wanted you to be emotionally hyped up to join this MLM. And, you know, I was I was young and immature, and, you know, I saw a sure thing. You know, hey, these guys have made money, and I want to make money too. So this seems like a good, they have a business plan. It seems reputable. I didn't know anything about business. I didn't know what actual business plan should look like. And the fact that they refused to throw any real details up front, I should have called on. But I didn't, you know. And that's why I I cannot stand MLMs. I really can't. Because um, they prey on future entrepreneurs. They prey on the people who um, are just trying to start a living and make a better life for themselves. So if I would have done more research and treated it like a project... I, I can promise you, I would not have ever gotten into this to begin with. It would have saved me a lot of time and a lot of pain. So I kind of want to talk today about approaching your businesses, your future entrepreneurial ventures as projects. Okay, so I'm actually going to get my textbook. What the textbook that I'm using right now is made by the Project Management Institute. It's their global standard called the Guide to Project Management Body of Knowledge, also called the PMBOK Guide. Um, it's the sixth edition. I think they're coming out with the seventh soon, so it may not be up to date when you guys hear this. But um, something to really talk about, you know, the differences between projects and programs and portfolios. We can get into the nitty gritty all we want, but mostly what I want to talk about is what's included in the projects. Okay, so we have to define it, you know, what it is that we're trying to get. Um, and all of that comes into the scope. So projects have defined objectives. The scope is progressively elaborated throughout the project life cycle. <clears throat> you want to have change in your project. So you have to expect that change will occur and be able to implement processes to keep the change managed and controlled. Because say you estimate that a job site is going to take 30 days. Well, suddenly... The coronavirus hits and your the materials for your projects are delayed in shipment. Like you don't get them here on time. That's going to cause a problem with your time. So you're not going to meet that deadline. So you have to take into, I mean, it's hard to predict something like the coronavirus taking place, but you have to account for delays in manufacturing, delays in shipping. Like you have to take all this into account. Planning. So project managers progressively elaborate high-level information into detailed plans throughout the project life cycle. Um, they manage the project, uh, manage other team members, manage the project objectives. They monitor and control the work of producing the products, services, or results. And they ensure the success of the project, the quality of the project, timeliness, the budget, compliance, and the degree of customer satisfaction, so if the stakeholders were satisfied. 
And so each phase of the project, you're going to have like a name. So like phase A, phase B, phase one, phase two, proposal phase, whatever. A name, a number, a duration, the resource requirements, um, you know, any entrance criteria to move into that uh, phase. For example, that can be like specific documents that you need completed. If you're building a shed in your backyard in Kernersville, you have to have a plan submitted and approved by uh, the town to build. True story. If you have an HOA, you have to have those documents submitted to the town and approved. Once those are done, you can actually order your shed. You can plan the schedule for it to be delivered. I mean, it's it's a project in and of itself. So that's just an example. Exit criteria. So this would be exit criteria for a project to complete a phase. This would be document approvals, completed documents. You know, that would also be part of uh, the shed phase. So once the purchase has been made, you get a receipt, things like that. I'm, I'm trying to think of like small projects to give examples of right now. And like I said, not a project manager. So any of you guys out here that are project managers, if I'm butchering it, I apologize. I'm just trying to put it into perspective of small business owners and entrepreneurs and just everyday life people who aren't managing 500,000 to 5 million dollar projects, building roadways or whatever the case is. And you can separate them, you know, projects, you want to have um, milestones for your projects for the phases in your projects. So you might have small milestones, like you complete two of the five houses, or you complete one of the eight houses, that might be a smaller milestone. But when you complete Four of the eight, you're halfway there, so that might be a big celebration because you're, you know, 50% of the way through the project, especially if you're on time, under budget, you know, all these things come into play. And you'll want to start uh, your project, and I talked about it earlier, um, a project charter. The project charter is based off your project business case. These are two critical documents that you'll need to even begin. Then you'll need your project management plan, project, um, the benefits manage- management plan, And there's a whole lot that goes into the actual planning of the project. So it'll be everything from the schedule. You'll need to schedule it. You'll need to talk about risk, what risk may come up. How can we manage these risks? Uh, Everything under the sun, you're literally imagining every scenario that could take place. And you are open and honest with your stakeholders the whole time. Hey, these are the risks we're looking at. This is how we're planning to manage those risks if they occur if they come up and by doing this you're actually managing the change in your project as well and you're lowering the risk the overall risk of being unsuccessful in the project completion so these are all things that take place and when you have partners in businesses you want to make sure you address things like assumptions you know what are you both assuming from this what are you assuming needs to be completed what do you expect you're getting in return you know just common things that we don't always think about you know we think that the the person we're getting into business with has the same stakes on the line the same expectations we do they're looking for the same outcome we are and we make these assumptions and then when something doesn't go that way that that person was expecting we get a rift and that's not something you can really afford to have in a project you want to keep your stakeholders happy so you talk about these things up front so we talked about doing marketplace research study the conditions, look at the legal restrictions, government or industry standards, academic research, you know, all these things can come can come into play, but not necessarily all of them will come into play. Uh, but as part of the planning procedure and initiating, you have to make sure you look at rules, policies, procedures, norms, things like that as your government's governance framework. And also as like a project manager, you may have different power depending on who initiated the project. So somebody may may come to you like a CEO and they're like, hey, I've noticed that this isn't working out in my organization and I want you to fix this by implementing this project. The first thing you need to do, and this will come in like your project charter and stuff, is establish how much authority you'll have. Can you hire? Can you fire? You know, can you make purchases? Things like that. Things that you might assume, hey, I'm being placed in charge of this project, so... We would, it would lead us to think that we have full control of the project. That's now our baby, and we're going to start making decisions about it. But when it involves money, people, 
And you got to think the people you're going to need already have full-time jobs, but you're going to need to take them away from their full-time job to get help with the project that you're implementing. So you have to take that into consideration as well. Manpower, you may just assume that people will be able to devote 50% of their time to your project when in reality they can't devote more than 25%. Well, that's going to take a hard hit on your duration of your project and therefore your budgeted time frame, your deadline might get screwed up. But these are all things I wish I would have I would have done and I would have treated my businesses when I first got started like a project. Everything from getting a trademark to later on business cards, making associations, networking with people, treated it as a project in terms of this is when I'm going to start. This is when I'm going to have the initial phase up and running of my business. And then from there on, it's no longer a project. Once you've launched that business and had some level of success in some realm, whether it's you have financial success, you build a network of success, something like that, your project is complete, you're successful. Then from there on, it's no longer a project, it's just maintenance and it's upkeep and it's running a business. If I would have been smart and organized, I would have treated my businesses like a project instead of just jumping in with no plan, um, just emotion. And while emotion and passion can be good, they can be an asset to fuel, you know, when shit gets gets hard it gets tough sometimes your passion will carry you through but if you're running on nothing but passion you're going to burn out so it's nice to have a plan in place and a plan that you look at and this project plan will be something that even after the initial phase is complete of your business launch you'll want to make adjustments to your plan to include um, a 30 day or we'll say a a three month So you go back to three months. After three months, you're going to look back at your plan and see what you've done, what you've accomplished, what's taking longer. Do we need to make a project to get this section of the business up and running? Because you may have gotten your business up and running, but now you need a website. Well, if you want to build a website, that's a project. You want to initiate it on March 7th. You want to have it done by, I don't know, we'll say April 15th. I know the deadline of all deadlines. <laughs> so that's your time frame. That means you need to find somebody you need to hire unless you know how to do it yourself, then you need to hire somebody to do it, you need to budget how much it's going to cost to not only hire them for their labor, but to actually pay for the website itself, the you know, the domain name, uh, the host site, everything like that, that goes into 